You can see the signs, they explain why this demonstration is taking place at the New York City headquarters of Senator Chuck Schumer, Democratic minority leader, and Christine Gilbert, the two senators from New York. This rally, this march, is demanding that they work to save ACA and not negotiate it away. And that they fight first and that they fix it. And that just be fixing, and that they fight for single payer system. You will notice the change in demographics at this rally and demonstration from the one earlier this morning at the Trump Tower for the Dreamer and the Dejanka. There are many, many, many young, undocumented young people there who are fighting to save DACA, which guarantees them education. Here we have people that are older because, you know what, the older people realize how important health care is and that it is a right and it should not be qualified for health care based upon income or status. Explain to the live stream audience the importance of marshalling to rise and resist and why you're out here training people. Uh, so I come from a form of activism where you don't ask permission from the police to demonstrate. So we march without permits on the sidewalk, which is legal, and we assemble without permits, which is also legal. But when you do that, when you don't ask for permission, you have to maintain your own order. And one of the things that we do as marshals is we help maintain order by delimiting the action, the legal perimeter.
perimeter of the action and by also helping people cross the street with the light. So we block traffic to make sure that people can cross the street safely. And it's really all about our organization trying to take care of itself rather than relying on the police to protect or anybody else to protect us. You're a member of Rise and Resist and have been very active in raising marshalling as a, a critical point in the organization. Have you experienced, and Rise and Resist is based upon consensus. People vote for certain actions and there are certain ground rules. What happens when someone breaks the ground rule that had been agreed upon by the organization? What happens to the marshals at that moment? So, you know, I wouldn't put it in terms of, for example, we don't have an agreement on nonviolence. What we have is an agreement, an informal agreement, not even a formal agreement, to take care of each other as an organization and to build community. So, what we tell people is people are going to try to provoke you, just bystanders, the police, Trump supporters. And what we tell people is don't let yourself get provoked, don't take the bait. That's a really hard thing for people to do, and it takes a lot of discipline, and we're trying to build that discipline in the group. When one of our people takes the bait, they're not breaking a rule, they made a mistake. So I would like to think that what we would do is get between them and the heckler bystander police officer and de-escalate and try to bring them back into the fold and back onto message because one heckler can destroy a demonstration if people take the bait. But don't take the bait. Exactly. Don't take the bait. Exactly. Occupy Wall Street Occupy Wall Street used the same techniques and very successfully. And whether they were agents or they were just angry demonstrators. But it protects you against provocateurs or agents. It also protects you against counter demonstrators and against the police trying to provoke you into you know the police only really know how to deal with violence they don't know how to deal with non-violence so if the police can instigate you to do something violent they know how to deal with that yes. and that allows them to use violence it's much harder for them to use violence when faced with steadfast you are you are the person who usually deals with the police in the rise and resist and, uh, you know we're trying to build there now a cadre of about eight of us who can do it How's, what's your, been your experience, though, of the New York Police Department? Do they welcome your assistance, if that's the word, or your presence? You know, I would say it's on a case-by-case -case basis, because the NYPD, we think of it as a monolith, but it's all the guy in the white shirt who's assigned to your demo, and they're very variable. So I think when they see a group that's well-organized, they relax a little bit. Um, and when they see a group that is not well organized and they're concerned about people going into the street or sitting down or potential violence, then they're less so. You know, I would say, uh, under all the pros and cons of de Blasio, that the police seem better overall under de Blasio than they were under Bloomberg. Or under Giuliani, but I have a very wait and see attitude towards it. Um, you know, we'll see how long it lasts. The, uh, you were active and act up prior to, to here, so you bring a lot of those tools and energy and focus that act up have. What would you say to a person who's sitting at home, maybe watching this? who would like to come out but hasn't done it before and may be a little frightened? Um, so this is, what I, this is what I would say. Almost every demonstration, go to it if it interests you, if the topic interests you. Go to it, check out the group that's running it, see how you feel about it. You can always leave. You can always leave. You can always leave, but go. Every group has a different feel to it and find a group that feels right to you whether it's big or small, and show up at the demos. Bring your own sign if you're concerned about what message. It's, excuse me. I may name it. Yeah. Uh, so Mark, want, Mark wants to see if it's all, because we're going to have to ask the cops to take it this way. If we can have just have one rotating line around the block. We're not going to negotiate. 
Uh, there's a big decision being made now about uh, whether to follow what the police want to do or determine our own legal right to be at this space. As you notice, this is a very large sidewalk here in front of the building. We're starting to, to have people come into the plaza and make an orderly uh, walk around. We're at the Rise and Resist rally and demonstration in front of the offices of the two senators from New York. And this is Mark Alano, who's given leadership to this action from the Health Committee of Rise and Resist. No, I think if the staff is here, they can yell at now. This demonstration is calling on them to protect the ACA, fix it, and fight for single payer like universal health care. Okay, John. And here's our itinerant Pete Seeger. long-held tradition of folks singing to organize. We're singing in practice. The DACA, John, the DACA rally I posted earlier today, which was going on at the Trump Tower, was you should go look, it's on my Facebook page, and we'll go back there when this is over. With this administration, you could demonstrate about everything every day. Thank you very much. Thank you. Mike Jack. Mike Jack. Mike Jack. Mike Jack. Mike Jack. Mike Jack. This is Karina from Senator Schumer's office. Yay. 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 And Brooke from Senator Gillibrand's office. Yay. Yay. Thank you for being here. Thank so you. Make everybody make a line. Mike Jack. Mike Jack. Drop your request in the lunchbox. Drop your request in the lunchbox. And yell out the thing you want our senators to do. And yell out the things you want our senators to do. Mental health. Medicare. 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 Single payer for all. Single payer for all.